The criminalization of mental illness for me is essentially the assumption that everyone who has an untreated mental condition who's arrested for a crime is dangerous and that putting them in jail is the safest way to keep the community safe. In Hennepin County, we have a pretrial detention facility, which people call the jail, and it has a capacity of about 750 people. Every day, between two and 300 people that are being held in that jail struggle with mental illness. That makes the Hennepin County Jail the largest psychiatric facility in the state. To give you some perspective on that, the largest hospital facility for mental health treatment has only 115 beds. Rikers Island, Cook County Jail, Los Angeles County Jail, St. Louis County Jail, those are the largest mental health providers in my community, in our country. What does that say about my community? What's it say about your community? What's it say about our nation? Just consider, there's a national discussion going on right now about how we can help folks with a chronic disease, diabetes. Well, there's also a national crisis. It's mental health and how we treat folks who are suffering a mental health crisis. Most people are interacting with friends, family, loved one, co-workers, people at the grocery store who are struggling with mental illness, but they don't see it. It is something that has impacted all of us at one point in our lives. Unfortunately, the difference between those who end up in jail and those who don't is access to resources. So when I think of criminalization of mental health, I think of the number of people who are struggling with their mental health who end up in our jails and our prisons because we are really operating in crisis mode. And we have put police officers uh, in the position of being social workers and trying to deal with issues uh, for which they have no training. It begins far too often with the 911 call. If you are well healed, if you have blue chip health insurance, when you're in mental health crisis, you go to the hospital. You're welcome. You go to the crisis stabilization center. But if you're poor, you're part of our indigenous community. Yes, if you're dark skinned, what happens? There's a high likelihood that day when your mind races, the voices are louder and louder and louder. Someone's going to put hands on you. Someone may use a stun gun on you. And in a nightmare scenario, someone will use a bullet to put you down. And they really had only three options. One was to leave the person where they were, and, and if they felt that the person was vulnerable to being injured or harmed or harming themselves, that really wasn't a viable option. They could bring the person to the hospital, but most people don't fit the criteria for hospitalization or commitment. The only other alternative was the jail. When people are arrested for an untreated mental condition, locking them up in jail is only going to exacerbate the situation. Most of the time, they're stripped of all of their clothing, given a vest where they would be able to hurt themselves. They're put in a cell all by themselves, and they're not given contact with anybody. If you think about what it's like to actually be in jail, you have no privacy. You can't eat your own food. You can't wear your own clothes. You're told what to do. No one's mental health is helped by being in the jail. There's no medicine. Instead, there's a turtle suit, which is the suicide suit that you're in, and there's a stun gun. People who work in jails, who are sheriff's deputies or corrections officers, aren't trained to interact with people with mental health issues or even recognize that a person's having mental health issues. That means there may be a behavior that's bothersome to the person running the facility and the reaction to that can be completely inappropriate because that behavior is a manifestation of mental health. And one of the things we heard from police officers is that they wanted another alternative. In the medical field, doctors take a Hippocratic oath, do no harm, and they are constantly told that they have to treat each of their patients as individuals. I wish that the criminal justice system had the same obligation 
and allowed us as defense attorneys to do the same. If not given adequate resources or our clients are not treated as individuals, the consequences can be very dire. I have seen clients end up in solitary confinement, end up becoming victims of crime, or ended up taking their own life simply because nobody was there to help them through the criminal justice process. What we need to do in our communities is to provide early services, very early services, so that when people are diagnosed as a youth, as a child, as an adult, that they're getting the help that they need and innovative help for complex issues like addiction and mental health issues so that they don't get into crisis mode because when they get into crisis mode that's where we see the behaviors that people notice. Most of the people who are arrested because of their mental condition where they've had behaviors that led to an arrest they're more likely to be a danger to themselves than a danger to anybody else. We need to find opportunities for communities to build crisis intervention centers. We need opportunities for police officers who have been trained to be warriors to find those skills to use words versus stun guns. We have been working for five years on a particular project called the Behavioral Health Stabilization Center, which is located in Minneapolis. And for the first time, police officers throughout Hennepin County have an option. When they interact with somebody who's struggling with their mental health, they can now bring that person to the stabilization center. It's voluntary, but that person uh, can be triaged and assessed and matched up with appropriate resources. You go to a crisis stabilization center. All the service providers are in the building. Someone helps you figure out how to navigate healthcare. There's the medicine cart. There's advocacy social worker to help you ask, what do you need for tomorrow? Someone helps you put together a housing plan. Someone helps connect you with your family. And you may leave in a day or two. But you know what? You have a place to come to that you feel safe and supported. You have some place maybe to come to tomorrow. We recently started a pilot project by working with a community mental health provider where once a person is arrested for a crime where their mental condition has led to that arrest, somebody from the community health provider will go in and assess them and she will connect them with resources in the community, whether it's medication management or case management services. By providing those services early on, right after arrest, rather than um, after disposition, after the case is over with, we've seen a significant reduction in the amount of time people have had to serve in jail. Another project that we worked on was to put a social worker or social workers in our first appearance courtrooms on all misdemeanors. So in custody, out of custody, we would have a social worker there in the courtroom. And then when they come back to court, they're really connecting with a social worker, not a judge, not a probation officer, frankly, not even with us. That has become so successful. It was a pilot project and now it's permanent. It's a lifelong battle. We can find solutions. It's medicine, it's therapy, it's the support. It's the very support that got you and I to where we are today. We have that at home, but if you don't, and you suffer from mental illness, the worst place for you to be is in our justice, so-called justice system. Treat people as human beings and give them the same consideration that anyone would want if it was their mother or their father or their brother who ended up in a jail cell simply because their behavior was the result of an untreated mental condition. Our challenge, your challenge, my challenge, our community's challenge is to ask a single important question as we look at mental health and crime. Why are we here? Why are we here? We are here to ensure people live well.